What is up, Dynasty Leaguers? Welcome back into another DLF YouTube channel video. Today, we're going to be talking about something uh, that hasn't really been talked about a whole lot on this channel, but still pertains very much to Dynasty fantasy football and overall strategy. Um, you know, a lot of people are very familiar with Dynasty startup drafts in terms of, you know, just the typical snake draft. Everybody picks a slot, one through 10 or 12, and you snake through your draft and you're picking, you know, your Dynasty players in a normal snake format. I wanted to talk about um, auction formats this, you know, in this video because recently I was a part of a Reality Sports Online Dynasty startup auction draft, and I wanted to share, you know, my experiences, my actual team using a real league, uh, and all that stuff in terms of just talking through some auction strategy in case any of y'all are actually out there uh, going to participate in any auction startups this summer. Uh, maybe you have before, and maybe you want to continue it. Maybe you don't have any familiarity with auction startups whatsoever, uh, but then maybe this video kind of gets you excited for it and you want to go for it. And I would highly, highly, highly recommend giving it a shot at least once to see how it goes. And it's a format that, you know, you definitely have to get used to. You definitely need to try uh, a couple of times. This wasn't my first uh, auction draft at all. I did a redraft one before in another Dynasty startup uh, previously as well. But this was my first time doing a reality sports online startup. Uh, in terms of their auction and everything and i can talk more about that specifically in terms of that specific you know dynasty site and league platform uh, but yeah that's basically going to be the whole entire crux of today's video is revolved around the dynasty auction format so let's get into the video so like i said i recently was in a Dynasty startup auction draft. This was actually last Saturday uh, on June 5th. And we basically were, were all in a league in Reality Sports Online. It's a 12 team Superflex tight end premium league. And on Reality Sports Online, basically all of their leagues are the exact same. And the way it works is everybody has, you know, the same salary cap, 182 and a half million, which does rise or dip based on the actual NFL salary cap. So this will rise presumably next year. Uh, and then keep kind of rising as the NFL salary cap rises as well. Uh, and then you formulate your roster, you get so many four-year deals, three-year deals, two-year deals, and an unlimited number of one-year deals. So there is a year-to-year -year turnover in terms of free agency and stuff, and really it just tries to mimic the NFL as closely as, as we can uh, in fantasy football with contracts and salaries uh, and a, a you know very solid hard salary cap as well so this is just a really really fun and exciting format and that is where the auction comes into play in terms of that you actually have to you know win your players and that salary that you win them for and for that contract length is then what they have so obviously the best players you know get four three-year deals uh, and then kind of on downwards from there and I, I really really like that because it gives a lot of players a lot more value than what they normally would in just the typical dynasty draft right like derrick henry might have you know kind of decreasing dynasty value just because he's 27 years old back-to-back -back 300 plus touch seasons you know what does his the rest of his career arc really look like if we're playing in uh, a two or three you know four year window that might be rough another guy like tom brady you know who's 43 years old how many more seasons does he have in a typical dynasty those two players might not necessarily be as valuable as what they would be in just 2021 well you can adjust for that by playing the contracts right by adjusting for their contract length derrick henry is on a one-year deal in this contract league tom brady's on a two-year deal i actually won tom brady and have him on my roster on a two-year deal so i really really like that aspect as well so i wanted to start talking about auction strategy and auction uh, formats and stuff and we can actually dive in and look at this league at the players that went and how much they went for uh, look i have it all broken down in terms of their contract length their total salary uh their yearly average as well and just kind of uh basically what i took away from this auction because it was a very different experience for me but i really really did enjoy it and if i were to do it again i would do it differently than what i did going into it on saturday because i, I didn't really have a plan in terms of actual numbers like how much these players are going to go for i more or less had a plan in terms of how i was going to build my team where I was gonna allocate my salaries and my contract length, uh, more or less, and I stuck to that plan pretty well. But there were other things in two other teams specifically that I really wanna highlight and showcase in terms of what they did as well 
to you know show the pros or the cons of of their two different strategies as well and then overall just some uh things that i picked up from this auction draft so we can look at the salary cap stuff that we have going on here this is the sheet that i pulled in from our league these are all the players uh and their salary cap that have it broken down into contract length their total contract value and then the yearly average so uh, you can see you know not necessarily that the best players have the most in terms of you know are the most expensive uh that's that isn't necessarily going to be the case and that probably won't be the case in your auction startup drafts and that's kind of leads me and segues me into my first overall point is that a lot of the times and what i'd really noticed from this one specifically is that players who are bid or nominated and put on the board earlier in terms of being nominated first specifically within tiers uh, but usually the first couple of players or handful or maybe the first round of players generally are values in auctions right so um, the way that that works is that we're trying to set the market and the price point for some of these guys and then as more and more of those players specifically like i said within a tier actually end up dropping out and they get you know taken by other teams and stuff and that tier gets you know, more and more reduced to only a small number of players those small number of players then actually get bumped up in value because people get scared and they get worried that they're going to miss out on a tier and they really really want to get their guy and they end up paying as much if not more for players lower in a tier than they were higher in a tier even though you might take players higher in a tier straight up over the other guys uh, but that doesn't necessarily you know pan out or is reflected in their salary caps and i can showcase that um, pretty easily just in a couple ways we can look first at the quarterback position so these are the quarterbacks that are being being paid the most um, in terms of yearly average right you can see dak prescott up there on a three-year almost 80 million dollar deal 26 million dollar average pat matt stafford is right there right behind him on a two-year deal and then we get into patrick mahomes who you would say would be the most expensive player and he actually is in terms of an actual contract 94 and a half million dollars over four years is the most expensive contract you know in the rso league and actually tied with joe burrow um and so the way that this worked and i actually fell victim to it because i have joe burrow um so you can learn from my mistake and what happened here but the way that the quarterback rooms went the first player nominated in the entire draft and the first quarterback nominated was trevor lawrence and he went for four for 72 mil next player was lamar jackson went for four for 70 and a half and then it kind of went on from there for the rest of these quarterbacks until we eventually got to you know kyler murray and josh allen both for four in the mid to low 80s uh, and then we got to patrick mahomes who really set the bar at four for 94 and a half and that was kind of the price point that everybody was kind of working with and getting familiar with and then as we got more and more down the line specifically within that top tier of quarterbacks dak prescott was one of the last guys like i said that's that's really what leads to his biggest and most expensive contract in terms of a yearly average on here joe burrow one of the last guys as well he was actually i think the last quarterback i would put in that tier before we get into like the you know the jared goffs and the jalen hurts's and the uh you know ryan Tannehills and baker mayfields of the group joe burrow was like the last guy in this elite top 10 quarterback one tier that you can put him in and i didn't want to miss out on having a you know a solidified quarterback kind of guy on my roster for my four-year deal and i paid the patrick mahomes price for joe burrow which is really unfortunate um i don't necessarily regret it but i do you know looking back on it i do wish i went harder on josh allen harder on carla murray because i can swallow those guys at a little bit more money for them than what i paid for joe burrow but that's ultimately you know just one of the examples of how this happened was you know guys like trevor lawrence and lamar jackson down here one of the first two players off the board in the entire auction but also some of the first quarterbacks you know ended up being major values like lamar jackson at 70 and a half million dollars is a major value compared to all these other guys especially when you're only getting him for you know 17 and a half million dollars per year like that's fantastic um, and then you can see like tua is basically the same price jalen hurts is basically the same price i think everybody would agree that you would take lamar jackson over both of them so that's just kind of how that worked um, you can also see this with the wide receiver position as well as another example one of the first wide receivers that was nominated and won was Tyreek Hill. He went for $58 million over three years. 
Um, and then if you look at other three-year deals and players that um, were valued similarly to Tyreek Hill in terms of a dynasty and stuff like that, if you cancel out Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase uh, and AJ Brown, went for some ridiculous contracts here, four for 80s, comparable to Kyler Murray and Josh Allen. Uh, but if you look at the other receivers who got a three-year deal, similar to Tyreek Hill, look at these names above Tyreek. Terry McLaurin, Calvin Ridley, DJ Moore, DeAndre Hopkins. These are all wide receivers who were nominated after Tyreek Hill. And then we got down and started dwindling down in these wide receiver tiers to the point where they actually went for more than what Tyreek Hill was going for. And Stephon Diggs was also, you know, right behind Tyreek Hill in nomination. So you can really compare Tyreek Hill to these three players right here and just kind of have a, a mind blown effect in terms of why Terry McLaurin uh, costs so much and why Calvin Ridley, who I really, really like, is still $5 million more than Tyreek Hill over a three year, you know, contract. So that's one of the things that I really wanted to point out and highlight is that typically in auctions uh, and something that I would want to advise and, and something that I would want to do moving forward is being more aggressive early uh, and trying to win players early on, especially earlier in tiers, because I know that they're going to actually end up being values at the end of the entire draft when you look back on it, because as tiers dwindle down, other managers start getting more and more nervous. And then you get to the point where you're spending more, if not uh, at least the same amount as the wide receivers or the other players that went earlier in the tiers. Like I said uh, before, even though you would probably take the players earlier in tiers than later, just straight up, that's just kind of how these salaries actually work. So we can go through quickly. I, like I said, I wanted to run through my personal strategy and then two other teams that actually uh, ended up having kind of opposing strategies and kind of on both extremes of paying for players. Uh, and just run through all that and and we can go through all that quickly so my team was a uh, wrestling team name uh, our our league theme was wrestlers and i don't know anything about wrestlers so i made mine wrestling team name um so this is how my team actually shook out um here i can sort it by uh position here for you so i have joe burrow tom brady uh, and mac jones uh, and gardner Minshew. but those are the quarterbacks i have right there i really wanted to make sure that i had a four-year deal on a good quarterback like i said that's really why i paid for joe burrow I spent a four-year deal on Mac Jones just because I can have him kind of waiting in the wings as I have the production in Tom Brady on a two-year deal. So I really, really like what I was able to do and come out with the quarterback position. Uh, for running backs, um, yeah, we can talk about Mike Davis, um, but I really got I got Nick Chubb. I got Miles Gaskin as my RB2. Um, Mike Davis, again, this is what happened with Mike Davis was he was literally, and by literally, I mean literally, the last starting running back to be nominated now i'm talking about he went like after backup running backs like he was going after latavius murray tony pollard chase edmonds he was going past like ronald jones this is just where he fell in terms of being nominated so it got to the point where when mike davis got up everybody was like crap that's a starting running back i need one of those and he got bumped up super super hard and i paid 19 million dollars for him on a one-year deal, uh, which is actually $4 million more than Derrick Henry, who was one of the earliest and one of the first players nominated in the entire auction. So again, just shows my point of players early are usually end up typically being values because as these tiers dwindle down, you're paying more and more for these guys just because of out of sheer necessity, you need them on your, on your roster and you're not gonna let them just be bypassed and won by someone else because you need them. So. I paid the price with Mike Davis. I paid the price with Joe Burrow. I'm going to have a lot of salary cap next year in terms of I have $19 million freed up with from Mike Davis, but it is what it is. The rest of my running back room is all a bunch of backups. Uh, basically, I was just you know trying to grab people for men, which was 500K or for a million um, and, and going that way. My tight end group, this is a, a tight end premium. It's 1.5 tight end premiums so and kind of not really a tight end premium, uh, but I got TJ Hawkinson for a three for 32 deal, which I really liked. Uh, it was cheaper uh, significantly than Kelsey Kittle Waller uh, and Kyle Pitts as well. Uh, and this whole auction was the day before the Julio Jones news. So Kyle Pitts didn't go for an exorbitant amount of money, but he did go for a lot more than TJ Hawkinson. Wide receivers, I really, this is just my typical dynasty strategy. I really want to have a solid core of guys that I can rely on week in and week out. And I went Michael Thomas, Allen Robinson, Mike Evans, and Robert Woods. Didn't really care about the age because I put them all on two or three year deals. And we're good to go there um and and i paid 
pretty even price for for most of them i paid more for alan robinson but i was okay with that um or for michael thomas i mean a rob mike evans and robert woods all about the same in terms of their yearly average so i was all right with that so that was just my team that's how it worked out um and basically my strategy going into this like i said i wanted the the lock in quarterbacks on four-year deals lock in some other studs on three-year deals like at running back i wanted at least one solid stud running back and then fill out my wide receiver core and then you know try to pay up for a tight end which i was able to do there so that was my strategy i stuck to it feel pretty good about what i was able to do uh, and we'll just see moving forward so there were two other teams like i said on completely different strategies so we can look at this first one and the way that this team worked the inner circle the what they did was absolutely insane i think that they spent out of 182 million dollar salary cap they spent 108 or 170 million of that in the first hour of this draft like they were done almost immediately and you can tell i mean look at their roster cd lamb christian mccaffrey dak prescott antonio gibson aj brown calvin ridley lamar jackson and saquon barkley so they got values on lamar jackson he got a value i think in uh christian mccaffrey as well even though kind of not really i think that was just a pretty good value um, I think he got values on AJ Brown and Calvin Ridley, just in terms of AJ Brown being uh, on a four-year deal, I thought was really, really good. Paid up for CD Lamb a little bit, paid up for Dak Prescott. Um, but overall, I mean, man, this guy went complete studs and duds. So this is what a studs and duds roster would really look like if you went just full on like studs and duds. You went for these eight players right here, and then this is his entire bench. So basically, He's going to be fantastic when he has his starting roster. If he has any injuries or even during bye weeks and stuff, he's kind of screwed. Like if Saquon or Antonio Gibson gets hurt, he's playing Keyshawn Vaughn or Jalen Richard uh, as his running back, his <laughs> RB2. Um, and then same for AJ Brown or Calvin Ridley because he's playing then uh, Devontae Parker, or Deshaun Jackson, or Michael Hardman, uh, which is kind of rough. But that's where he's at. And really hope that no quarterback that hurts gets hurt either uh, between Lamar and Dak Prescott because he's he screwed there. Um, but that is a full on studs and duds approach, and he could he could work this a number of different ways. Like he could you know trade Christian McCaffrey and break him up into two players. He could do that with Calvin Ridley or AJ Brown. Uh, but th I really wanted to showcase this team because I thought it was really really interesting with what he did. Then you contrast that with Gronkomania. This team. What they did is they did not spend a single dime. I think basically an hour and a half into the auction. They, did, they just spent the first hour and a half just watching everything go by. They didn't spend a single dime. And then all of a sudden, something like clicked in him. And he won, then ripped off at least, you know, six or seven players in a row. Uh, and was in on a new, number of other players uh, throughout that whole entire stretch of maybe two, two rounds of nominated players. Um, and ripped off all of these guys. And this was the team that he was able to put together. Um, so he's got Matthew Stafford, Baker Mayfield, um, were the two quarterbacks that he got uh, in that stretch. He also got J.K. Dobbins and Aaron Jones in that stretch. And then at uh, tight end, you got Mark Andrews, wide receiver Chris Godwin, Cortland Sutton, Cooper Cup, Julio Jones, and LaVisca Chanel. So ultimately, you know, I think a pretty solid team. And he waited and waited and waited and just, you know, was like, yeah, I have more money than you. I'm grabbing this guy. I'm just going to win him. Um, so that's that was the approach that he went for and completely waited. And it's basically the snake startup equivalent of the guy who's trading down constantly and has like 10 picks between rounds four through eight or something like that. That's essentially what uh, this this team did versus, you know, the other team uh, that went completely studs and duds was almost like he could, you know, trade all of his picks to only then have you know, eight first, second, and third round picks. That's basically what he did versus this team that traded down a whole bunch um, in, in startups. That's kind of the equivalence there. Um, but that's at least how that all worked, how that auction worked. Um, and basically my biggest takeaway in that, you know, I if, if I were to do this again, I would definitely, definitely, definitely be way more aggressive at the very beginning uh, and try to win players earlier in the overall auction overall in tiers uh just try to be way more aggressive earlier and not really try to sweat you know here's a half a mil or a, mil a million dollar difference or if you guys are just doing a, a typical uh, startup auction maybe you have like a thousand dollars or something like that as your salary cap um just not really worrying about nickeling and diming some of these players because 
you know, at the end of it, you get to play, pick the players that you really, really want. And if you just are really set on a, on a guy or on a certain, you know, roster strategy or roster construction, you know, don't let nickels, dimes and, and dollars really get in your way um, and just go for it. So just, you know, keep going. Uh, maybe don't keep going super far because that's what I get when I get Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes. Uh, but like I said, I don't necessarily regret that. Uh, but that's just overall, I really wanted to share my takeaways and my, uh, my experience from this reality sports online startup. So you guys, if you have, you know, any questions about this, definitely drop them down in the comments. Uh, and, uh, I, I really recommend checking out reality sports online. It is a super fun format. Uh, it is, you know, awesome because the system does everything for you in terms of the contracts, the values, you get franchise tags. There's a free agent auction during the off season to deal with free agency. Um, everything about it is auction based, but it is super, super fun. And you can really, you know, test your limits and test your knowledge with fantasy because this is dynasty, but it's also not necessarily dynasty because there is, you know, significant turnover in that we only really keep about a third uh, or at least a little bit less than half of our roster moving from year one to year two uh, and just continuing on down through the the rest of the, the league every single year um so there is that aspect to it but it is really 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 fun to be a part of something like this so definitely check that out if you are looking to do that um, but make sure if you are starting a league that you have owners that are dedicated to not only drafting for the auction uh because the auction we just did it in one afternoon it took about seven or eight hours um, and we all just sat in front of our computers and did it and grinded it out um, but you also just need dedicated owners because this isn't for you know, just your average dynasty player or your newbie dynasty player, you really got to know what you're doing and be comfortable with it. Um, because this is going to be every single year, you're going to have auctions uh, for the free agency and then rookie drafts get contracts and salaries, you know, assigned to them like the NFL does. So it's just it's it's a much bigger game <laughs> for sure when you're talking about reality sports online, but it's very, very, very fun. So um, thank you all so much for watching, for tuning in. Um, sorry that this video kind of went on, uh, pretty long and I, I just feel like I just kind of went on and on, but, uh, thank you so much for watching, for tuning in. I hope this helped with your auction strategies. Um, definitely drop some comments down below. Uh, if you are interested in doing auctions or maybe you have auctions coming up, uh, stuff like that. And I really just wanted to hit on this very fun, uh, frustrating, uh, but very fun dynasty startup format instead of just your typical snake draft. So. Um, with that all being said, guys, thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch y'all later.